So me and Sneeko have been pretty tight as of late. Ever since our back and forth on social media, now we talk all of the time. We hang out together when he's not in Mecca. He brings me soup when I'm feeling sick. And we even went skydiving together. But unfortunately, I regret to report that our guy Sneeko needs some help. You see, because in the past, Sneeko rejected Christianity in favor of Islam for what he considered to be intellectual and moral reasons, which we saw in previous videos didn't make that much sense. But today, Sneeko has updated his reasons, which prompted me to make this video. After seeing where Sneeko's been headed, it's clear to me that he's in trouble. And here's why. All right, so let's start with the newest intellectual reasons that Sneeko gives for rejecting Christianity in favor of Islam, and then we'll move on to the more troubling, more conclusions that he arrives at. So one of Sneeko's biggest reasons that he's been given lately for the truth of Islam is that Jesus was a Muslim. Jesus, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. Also, Jesus was a Muslim. I know you're Catholic, he was. And here's his reasons that he gives for that conclusion. And you were the, the one who made me realize that by definition, Jesus was a Muslim. Of course. Jesus served God. He did. He, he did submitted the, 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 himself. He submitted to God. He, he put his head to the floor like a Muslim. Exactly. And just like all of the, all the prophets, they were all Muslim, even though it didn't. Now, real quick, before we respond to this, can we just take a second to acknowledge that even all of the surroundings know that Sneeko got this one wrong? It's almost like Steve Harvey is in the car behind him. Just like all of the, all the prophets, they were all Muslim, even though it didn't. Twitter right now, they're putting community notes on my tweets. They're saying that Islam was created 600 years after mm. uh, Jesus died, all this stuff. But that doesn't mean just because the, the Quran wasn't written yet doesn't mean that you can't be a Muslim as long as because by definition, it's just somebody well, who exactly. serves God. All right. So let's start with Sneeko's first claim that Jesus was a Muslim because Muslim simply means one who serves God. The definition of Muslim means one who serves God. All right. So here Sneeko cites the etymological definition from the literal word in Arabic, which just means one who submits. But then he turns around and he acts as if there isn't a difference between the literal definition of the word and the modern definition of the word, which we all know refers to someone who believes in and follows the teachings of Islam. The problem with this argument is that he's equivocating two different uses of the word Muslim in order to make his point. Now, if you're having a hard time seeing what's wrong with that, that would be like an LGBTQ advocate trying to lure Sneeko's fans into joining them by saying that Sneeko is gay. And you should also be gay since the word only means cheerful. Now, it is true that the original word means cheerful, but it's still misleading to say that Sneeko is gay since we all understand that the word has quite a different meaning today. So if Sneeko could see just how ridiculous that argument is, then he can see just how ridiculous his argument is as well. Sneeko isn't gay and Jesus wasn't a Muslim. It's deceptive to act like there isn't a difference in the classical uses of the word and how we use the word today. And if all it means to be a Muslim is just to submit to God, then that would mean that I'm a Muslim, even though I don't believe that Muhammad was a true prophet. And there also wouldn't be a need for Sneeko to tell people to take the Shahada in order to convert to Islam. Yeah, take your Shahada, come to Islam, brother. So that was a pretty bad argument. But Sneeko gives another argument for why he believes that Jesus was a Muslim. His argument is that Jesus was a Muslim because he prayed like a Muslim. Jesus, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. He put his head to the floor and prayed to God. Well, the one so it's not just- He put his head to the floor like a Muslim. Exactly. And just, he, so he must be a Muslim because in the Bible and the Quran, Jesus put his head to the floor and prostrated and prayed like a Muslim do. All right, now what's wrong with this argument? Well, unfortunately, Muslim apologists have been making this argument for years, and it only works on people who know nothing about the Bible. For example, the only support that they have for this claim comes from Matthew 26, 39, which says that Jesus fell with his face to the ground and prayed. Now, before we see what's wrong with this claim, let's first be clear about what this argument is attempting to show. This argument is saying that we should one, believe this passage because it showed how Jesus prayed, two, that this passage is evidence that Jesus was a Muslim, and three, that Christians should also pray like this since Jesus did. So if we start with one and we do accept this passage, then we'd also have to accept the fact that Jesus prayed also by calling God the Father, which is something that Islam vehemently rejects given Surah 1988 through 93. In the words of the Dizzle, Allah's got 99 names, but Father ain't one. To call God fathers to make partners with Allah, which is called shirk, which is one of the worst sins that someone could possibly commit and is equivalent to unbelief in Islam. So if Sneaker wants to point to this passage for evidence for how we should pray, then he should also reject Islam. If not, then he should stop using this argument based on this verse, especially since the verse is clear that the reason why Jesus prayed with his face to the ground was because he was in immense distress, not because he was praying like a Muslim. 
But for argument's sake, let's just say that Jesus prayed like a Muslim in this passage. Well, even if we grant this verse, then what are we supposed to do with all of the other verses of Jesus talking about praying while standing up in verses like Mark 11, 25, or all of the other verses where Jesus prayed by looking up to heaven, like in Matthew 14, 19, Mark 6, 41, Luke 9, 16, John 11, 41, John 17, 1, and so on. So did Jesus really pray like a Muslim, even though he looked up to heaven while praying, which is strictly forbidden in Islam? I don't think so. So both of the arguments that he gave so far were pretty bad, but not nearly as bad as the next reason that Sneakle gives, and that reason is Jesus wasn't even a Christian. Huh? Here's what he has to say about that one. How could, it, it's so silly to me, how could Jesus be a Christian? Yeah, exactly, couldn't. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, even I imagine Je He can't be a Christian. How could Jesus be a Christian? You can't follow yourself. Okay, okay, but, but, but Jesus Christ is last day. I'm I follow me. You don't follow yourself. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. And then you say Jesus was a Christian. That doesn't make any sense. How could you be Christianity is based on the fact that he died for his sins. You can't be a religion when the whole religion is, is based upon him dying. Now, if you found that argument to be incredibly underwhelming, you're not alone. I have no idea why he thought that he really did something there. The problem with this argument is pretty straightforward. When someone says that they're Christian, they're just saying that they profess faith in Christianity. And if you want to get back to the etymology, then the word Christian just means Christ follower. So obviously, since we're following Christ and he's not the one following us, then Jesus wasn't a Christian in that sense. But this is hardly a point worth making since Jesus obviously believed in the teachings of Christianity since he's the one that taught him. I mean, Sneeko. What would you say if I said that you shouldn't be a Muslim because Allah wasn't even a Muslim? Well, you'd probably say something like, obviously Allah wasn't a Muslim since he not only created the world, but he's the one that revealed the tenets of Islam to humanity. And I would agree with you, that would be a pretty bad argument, right? Well, in Christianity, Jesus is God, everything was created through Jesus, and Jesus is the one that revealed the tenets of Christianity to humanity. So I'm genuinely unsure how this is supposed to be a problem for Christians. And before you say that it doesn't make sense for Jesus to be both God and man, you have to remember that your criticism is supposed to be an internal critique of Christianity to show what Christians believe. If you want to discuss a logical consistency from a Muslim perspective, then I'd love to do so. Next time you call me for brunch, we'll do it. But here's the thing, I honestly have to give Sneeko props because even though everyone suspects the reason why he became a Muslim was because he just believed whatever Andrew Tate said and uncritically accepted Islam because of it, Sneeko has still taken his faith a million more times seriously than Tate ever has and likely ever will. But the only problem is ideas have consequences and bad ideas often have bad consequences. For example, once the war started in Israel on October 7th, the only thing that everyone knew that happened was that Hamas stormed into Israel and started indiscriminately shooting and killing innocent men, women, and children, killing everyone that they could while raping and taking other people hostage. Now, two years ago, I think that Sneeko would have responded by condemning the actions, but given Sneeko's new moral framework, what did he have to say about all of that? He posted Allahu Akbar, meaning God is greatest. That's the only thing that he had to say about it on X. Think about this, a couple of years ago, Sneeko would never appear to be happy that innocent people were being slaughtered in the street and let alone praise his God for it. And even if Sneeko believes that Palestine is under Israeli occupation, which he does, still, why would his first and only response be to praise God for the deaths of over a thousand innocent civilians and children? Nothing else was gained that day. He either thought that Hamas killing innocent people was a good thing, which means that he's been morally compromised by certain Islamic thinkers and his morality is objectively getting worse not better, or he was only praising his God because he thought that this was the first step to Palestine being free, which means that his critical thinking skills have also been compromised by certain Islamic thinkers, since obviously all Hamas did was destroy any hope for a peaceful resolution. But even more, sometime after this tweet, he tweeted, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And in isolation, I would be willing to assume that he probably just thought that this only referred to Israeli occupation rather than a call for the elimination and genocide of the Jews. But just a few days ago, he also tweeted, Osama bin Laden was innocent. Sneeko made this tweet after bin Laden's letter to America was trending. And in this letter, bin Laden says that there's no such thing as an innocent American and that all Americans deserve to die. And then he has 3000 Americans killed and Sneeko says he's innocent. Right, he's the good guy. The same guy that believes that Sneeko is not only guilty, but also deserves to be killed because he's guilty. 
So Sneeko's defending a guy who literally called for the eradication of not just Sneeko, but also everyone that Sneeko loves. So what could possibly make a thinking person accept such a ridiculous conclusion? I mean, does Sneeko not realize that even on October 7th, if he was in Israel at that time, or if his mom or sister were, they would have killed Sneeko's entire family without hesitation, or worse, taken his mom and sister for you know what. So again, I'm not sure Sneeko has thought any of this through well, and that's a problem with being in an echo chamber with really bad ideas. Now, now, people might disagree with me here, but I honestly don't think that Sneeko has bad intentions, and I also don't think that he's dumb either. I think Sneeko's open-minded, which can be both a gift and a curse. Being open-minded means that you're open to a wide range of ideas, but the bad side is that it also makes you vulnerable to accepting bad ideas and beliefs uncritically. No one starts off wanting to be a terrorist or a murderer or accepting these radical ideas. They have to accept a lot of little beliefs and thoughts that take them to that place over a long stretch of time. This is why it's so important to carefully and critically accept thoughts and beliefs instead of just accepting them because the people around you agree with them as well. If Sneeko does this, I'm confident that he'll not only realize that he's been misled with bad ideas and morals, but he'll also realize that Christianity not only makes more sense intellectually speaking, but morally speaking as well. So Sneeko, the next time that you find yourself uncritically accepting these really bad arguments that you've been given from Uthman and other Muslim apologists, what are you gonna say? What do you mean?